husband number one is a nurturer someone that nurtures number two every human being is a what potential offender many wives don't know the moment you insult your husband they beat you servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him every man at the beginning doth set forth the good wine and when men have well drunken then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now the bible says this beginning of miracles did jesus in Cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed him or believed on him so there is virtually no married person alive that doesn't want a sweet marriage who doesn't want a sweet marriage let me see your hand everybody wants a sweet marriage nobody got married to have a bitter or unpleasant experience in marriage everybody believed that marriage would make them happy and that's why they got married and everyone wants a sweet marriage yet most people do not know the cost of a sweet marriage they don't know what it costs so everything good has a cost attached to it marriage will have its normal challenges they are you know man and woman living together and all that but it cannot but, but it can also remain sweet despite the challenge hallelujah because of certain prices that would have been paid well ahead of time if you're hearing me say yes nobody is perfect and you don't need to be perfect but you can with your imperfect self you can have a sweet marriage in fact this groom in our text was not a perfect groom he wasn't perfect but he had positioned himself someone say position him he had positioned himself very well and had paid certain prices ahead of time notice that the governor praised him he praised the groom so much for a wonderful job bringing the best wine for the last. But the groom himself didn't know how that thing came about. Because he was at the table with the governor of the feast. The scripture says, not knowing where it came from. When God, when, when you position yourself well, you won't even know how things work fine for you. Another amazing fact is that the groom and the bride also did not know where the wine came from. Okay? They didn't know where the sweetness was coming from. That's how people praise many of us and we ourselves don't even know how say your marriage is so sweet this is so your marriage is so nice and you don't even know what they are talking about only them know what they are talking about you can't really explain how the thing comes about whether you like it or not people will taste the wine of your marriage rewind whether you like it or not people will do what they will taste the wine people have tasted the wine of your marriage and people will taste the wine of a marriage and guess what they will talk Gang -gang. they will do what many will say it back to you some will say it to your face some will say it at your back they will talk they are, they are talking right now that's the truth may you give them something good to talk about I didn't hear that amen again so this family did a few things that took away the stress from their marriage they did some things that took away the stress. So when we read the Bible, you need to read around and read well and find out the cause for certain results in the Bible. All right? So it saved them embarrassment, saved them failure in the latter end of their marriage, and so on and so on. These are the things I consider as the costs, the things that were done. These are the things that we consider the cost. Number one, they developed a strategic relationship with the family of Jesus Christ they developed a strategic relationship with the family of jesus christ that was one of the things they did who was this family member the mother of jesus they had that relationship going for them and what's the family of jesus today someone said the church the church is jesus family they had a strategic relationship with the family of jesus and listen to me very carefully amongst other things it is very difficult to have a sound marriage where you you don't have a church life you don't have any relationship with the family of God. Having Mary present at that marriage feast was the first powerful step they took. The first powerful step. May God bless you with strategic relationships. By virtue of that relationship, Jesus himself 
was invited along for that marriage and he came with his disciples jesus himself was invited hallelujah okay so so that was what blessed that marriage you cannot be related to the family of jesus and be stranded in times of difficulty you cannot be related to the family of god and be stranded in times of difficulty they will take up your matter before jesus christ how many of you know that how many of you know some of us in church right now you don't know how many people are praying for you in this church when you have issue people with issues and all that we'll never know the support system you provided yourself okay maybe a prophet calls down and say come uh, god wants to that's when you see everybody shout then then one one person told me i didn't know people knew and loved me like that in church people know you that is the that's one powerful thing many people miss and why do people don't come to church why do they uh, say church do i have to go to church it's either error heresy or pride pride hallelujah i said hallelujah the family of jesus today is the church of god someone says the church of god if the church cannot do anything for you they will talk to jesus on your behalf they will talk to jesus on your behalf that's the truth L let one person get to know that's why you must belong to a to a cell fellowship a lighthouse fellowship is our cell system belong to one why that is where you your strongest support system is found very strong people can intercede on your behalf and stand in the gap for you praise the name of the lord i said praise the name of the lord when peter was was imprisoned the Bible said the church prayed without ceasing for him in Acts chapter 12 when he was arrested by Herod to be killed after Easter that the church interceded for him without that non-stop prayer till Peter was released hallelujah so develop a strategic relationship with the family of Jesus number two these couples surrounded themselves with servants of God I like that part very well jesus instructed the servants there on what to do now who are the servants you say oh they are the people they are the ushers that came to serve in the wedding feast and so on we are giving it spiritual interpretation right now we are looking at things spiritually those servants there were members of that brother and that sister's department in church People who serve in the same department. Hello, how many of you know when you wed, your department members are the ones who are going to be all over the place for you? They are the ones. If you are, or you have a burial, or there's, a, there's, a, there's an issue, baby dedication, naming ceremony, those are the people that will show up more than anybody else. Somebody is in church and you don't belong to any service unit, you don't belong to anything, and you're expecting miracle. It doesn't work like that, oh. Some of you will now call me. Pastor, my name is... Idobise, boy Kana, Jeffrey, Abasi. Then they will add, I am a member of your church. And I will say, I reject in Jesus' name. I don't own a church. Glory to, <laughs> glory to God. For, for that, that, that particular statement shows that you are a stranger. Hallelujah. You don't know how we talk here. You can't say I'm a member of God's house. I'm a member of your yeah, you want to kill me? He said, I will be in my church on this rock, not on pastor. I refuse to own the church. I own a car, own a family, own a house, own a wife. <laughs> well, my wife is my property. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> the only property I'm not sharing with anybody. So I, I, I share the children with her, but the one property don't share with nobody. So I own all these things except the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. How do you know? If I go today, this church will still run. That's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. So leave me alone. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, if Jesus take, takes me today, some pastors over involve themselves with the church. And abandon their families, abandon their wives, and what they do, they fail to realize that they are committing spiritual adultery with Jesus' wife, and leave their own wife at home. Leave Jesus' wife alone and go to your wife. 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> so when there was need for something to be done, for a miracle to happen, every miracle follows an instruction. Every miracle follows an instruction. The miracle happens when instructions are obeyed. He spoke to the servants. He didn't speak to the executives because they won't carry out the instruction. Jesus speaks to people he knows, he knows will obey him. Hallelujah. Fill the water pot with water. So this man surrounded himself with servants, so, which means he himself was a servant. He himself was a servant of God. No wonder he benefited from this intervention. Because the word of God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> and every time the rise against you, judgment is condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hmm? How can somebody be so blessed and servants are all over the place? Those are people who serve with him. His colleagues in the service of God. Hallelujah. They were members of his service unit. It takes a servant to have servants hang around you like that. Hallelujah. Note, when God wants to reach for you, when God wants to reach you, when God wants to help you, in order to help you, this is another dimension of the understanding servant now, in order to help you, he will reach for his servants in order to reach you. Which also means, belong to a local assembly, and when God wants to reach you, he can get to you through his servants, the prophet, the pastor. He can reach you through them. When you are disconnected from fellowship, God can't reach you. It's difficult. Say, so, God, where were you looking when this thing happened? God's have been looking like this all the time. You were not at the right place at the right time. So I couldn't reach you. God sent Elisha to the widow, Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. God sent Elisha to the Shunammite woman. God will always reach you through a servant. This is the servant that will fill your water pot with water. And that water pot is your spirit. I'm going to come to that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Will fill you with water. When you are filled with the word, then the miracle starts to break open. So you want a sweet home? Be connect, surround yourself with servants of God. I'm not saying you should go to some people are just professional customers at some pastors. That's pro, some of them are thieves to the highest order. And they have a way of entering pastors' bodies. That is not, that's not the type I'm talking about. Okay? I've told you what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people just go, they will just go to a man of God, you know, they don't even know before. The man doesn't know, they don't know. Give him snail. Um, uh, 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 you know, the love in Domi. They will go just, just to curry favor. And they have, you see, when they do an occasion, you see like 16 different men of God who, who thought they were the only ones that knew. 16 of them show up at the same time and he mostly women like to do that thing some men do it too and they have achieved their they have achieved their purpose to get this man around them it doesn't work like that it's called spiritual prostitute shun hallelujah just got to go, go up and down up and down like that many times some of those who are not born again they are not born again Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you still with me today? So have servants of God around you, both in church, your pastor is a servant of God, fellow servants in the house of God. Fellow servants. Are you getting me now? Number three. What did they do? Number three cost of sweet marriage is that this man had the water pot of purification on ground. There was the water pot of purification. How many of you know the word of God is the purifier? John's gospel 17 17 sanctify them through thy word thy word is truth so that's the water pot for purification it had a meaning in the old testament but this time we're talking about the new testament we're talking about the revelation behind these things and there were surprisingly six water pots how many water pots were there six and secondly the water pots were empty that is very instructive six water pots and all of them were what empty the pot that is supposed to contain water has no water and what is six man was made on the sixth day six is the number of man six stand for man and 
the water pot of man, which is his spirit, is empty of the world, what happens? The worst of that man will come out. When the world is not in your spirit, your life will rotten. That is, what will come out of you will surprise you yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Your water pot is empty. When they call Jesus, they have no wine. Jesus quickly diagnosed the reason why the marriage was not sweet. The water pots are empty. There is no word. What is word of God? Ephesians 5, 26. That it might sanctify by the washing of water by the word. The water pots were empty. They were empty. No water in the water pot. No word in the spirit. Mm. No word of God. In the, I'm going to know where your spirit is. Touch where your spirit is. One, two, go. People don't know whether to touch the head or the shoulder. Where do you think your spirit is? Touch. One, two, go. You're touching heart. You see? It's not in your heart. It's in your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The, the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of where? The belly. Mm. Glory to God. That's why we eat too much can't break in. Hallelujah. <laughs> you finish loading everything. Where you say, Jesus. <laughs> you bet. Crump, crump. <laughs> Rokosho, Rokosho. Rokosho. The next thing you see is to sleep one correct sleep. You say, Lord, if I sleep this sleep, I will come back in this prayer. Thank you, Lord. You give it your beloved sleep. <laughs> the reason for that sleep is that all the blood has been, has been sucked away from the brain to the belly to assist digestion. You have given all the blood, the, all the blood system. They've said, there's work in the belly region, so much food to digest today. Everybody run there. And now there's shortage of blood in the brain. So what happens? That's why you sleep after eating. I, 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 I'm a doctor, it's just that. Uh, <laughs> don't joke me. <laughs> Ask my wife. I intimidate her sometimes with my knowledge of medicine. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. How can the water pot be empty and you are looking for sweetness? My husband is not romantic again. My husband, you know, my, husband said, my wife is very stubborn. My wife is nasty. My wife, oh God, I'm tired. Uh, go and check them. Live with them for, what, for 12 hours or 24 hours. They have not opened the word of God one day. Belly, spirit is empty of word. Look, it is the word in your belly, in your spirit that brings sweetness in your life. Hallelujah. When he said no more sweet, it means no, no joy, no sweetness, no happiness. Everything is running dry. The number six. How many of you know you've heard of six, six, six? Can I give you a little secret? There may be no, well, all of us will be raptured. So we'll see what Antichrist will be doing. Whether it's going to be writing six on people's head or hand. But they've acted all manner of movies. And drama where they write six sixes on people's head. And excuse me, as time is going, we are realizing that thing. There may be no writing. Hello? They've talked about binary number. You know, binary numbers is the best way you can describe this 66. It's basically computer. So all the people are sitting there waiting that will write six on the people someone's head. They may put a head at the right hand is the best place to put. It's your best identification. Uh, put some to water chip or something. That, may, that sounds like this. And listen, rapture has not taken place yet. It's just easy identification. Any human being in this world, wherever you are, that's how they find you. Not by writing it with pen or tattooing it on your body. Praise the Lord. But for your information, 666 is the highest man can ever go. Man at his, maybe worst or best. Man is not trying to invent human being. How many of you know that? They are trying their best to invent human beings. And human beings not working like normal. So they will kill it and start another one. You know, trying to invent. That's man. Man, man, man. is 666. Hmm? Man, man, man without God. 
You know what it is for man to be without God? Man, man, man. How many of you know the world is getting worse, worse, worse? By reason of man, man, man. How they will carry a two-year-old boy, put inside a portmanteau to go and sell in order to have money. Man, man, man. Hallelujah. So when your life is without the word of God, <laughs> you manifest what? CC6. Wickedness of the highest order. The Bible said, there were six water pots and they were all what? How can you be running life when you know what human nature? The Bible said, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Nobody can know it. And then your water pot is empty. Oh, come on. I don't read the Bible because, yes, the Bible makes me excited. I like it. But when I began to make the Bible my friend, it wasn't sweet to read. I just read it. I read and sleep. And then at the time, you just hold your eye to make sense out of it. Before, before I can read Psalm 119, it will take me three days. Because I want to both study and all that. Three days. Now I can finish Psalm 119 in one hour with study, taking notes and everything. Because it's, sweet, it's getting sweeter and sweeter. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you still with me here today? He said, fill them with water. Okay, let me do, let's talk about the water pot that was empty. Okay, so when the spirit is void of word, the worst of you will come out and it will affect your marriage eventually. The worst of you will come out and it will affect your marriage. Four, so Jesus instructed the servants to fill the water pots. How were they to fill it? Who knows? How were they to fill the water pots? Say it well. Yeah. Are you afraid? Say it again. You know, sometimes we read it and we forget that brim. How are you to fill it? Oh, Chai. Not everybody's answering. Some people don't know where the Bibles are. How are you to fill the water pot, everybody? So what does that mean in light of what I've been saying? Don't give occasion for the flesh. Don't give any occasion for the flesh. Fill your spirit to the brim. That's how sweetness will come to your marriage. No room for the flesh. The cure for the lack of sweetness in marriage is to fill your water pots with water to the brim. To the brim. Read till you feel full. Hallelujah. Allow God to use his servants to pour word into you to the brim. Hallelujah. Allow God. He said, let, he told the servants to pour the water. Let God use his servants to pour into you to the brim. Psalm 119 verse 103. I read it yesterday. Very powerful word. He said, your word is sweet to my taste. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey. To my mouth. When you put that sweet. I was asking them to show me. In first time for couples yesterday. If anybody has found sugar in the Bible. And nobody has answered me till now. Please Google. Sugar in the Bible. There's no sugar. So fear sugar. <laughs> fear sugar. <laughs> there is honey. Amen. Look at what it says in Psalm 19 verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than what? And the honeycomb. Samson asked, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? But there's something sweeter than honey. It's called the word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. When your life is sweet, your marriage will be sweet. When your life is sweet, your marriage will be sweet. The word of God is first a purifier and a cleanser. The word of God is first what? A purifier and a cleanser. John 17, 17. And Matthew, uh, sorry, uh, Ephesians 5, 26. Psalm 119 verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to thy word. Psalm 119 verse 9. Your character is a major problem to your marriage. Tell your neighbor for me like that. 
Tell the person, say, I'm saying, say, tell it respectfully. Say, your character, brother, sister, is a major problem to your marriage. Gang, Some of you, the way your neighbor frowned their face. You free, you, as you start, you saw their face, you change to the next neighbor. Now, look at your next neighbor, everybody. Especially that strong face one. Say, brother, sis, your character is a major problem to your marriage. <laughs> Praise God. And that's what the word of God does. It cures your character. It cures your character. Praise God. Uh, that's why your water pot cannot be empty. It must be filled with water to the brain. Feel it every morning, please, as you wake up. Don't, don't make excuses. Pray, worship, and then open that word and look at it, study it, read it to your satisfaction. Read it very well. Understand it. You will not know. You may not know, but something is happening to your character. Something is changing in your life. Washing is taking place. Hallelujah. The only way to keep your character in check is by the word of God. Psalm 1, 9, verse 11. It says, thy word, have I what? Heed in my heart. That I may not do what? That I may not sin against you. I mean, you know, when you harass your partner, talk to them anyhow, you've sinned against God. Say, thy word, have I heed in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Stand to your feet. husband number one is a nurturer someone that nurtures number two every human being is a what potential 